Hello and welcome. So this is an update video for one we did about two years ago, which talked about how you can manipulate the traces and the track map. So a lot has changed since then, and now it's time to do an update on that video. So stick around. Okay, so here we are in the Z1 analyzer. Now I have a lap at SPA in the BMW loaded. I've got my track map displayed here, uh, various traces displayed here, and uh, some data channels over here on the right. Now the first thing I'm going to want to do is make sure I have the track map orientated uh, how I want it. So right now when I loaded it, uh, it comes in looking like this. And using these three icons, I can flip it left and right, up or down, or I can rotate it. Uh, so personally, I like SPA being displayed this way, so I'm going to leave it like this. In addition, I can have a throttle and a brake overlay displayed on top of it by clicking this icon right here. If I do that, you see the green for the throttle and the red for the brakes. And uh, the darker the color, the more on the throttle or the on the brakes you are. And finally, I can click this icon here to get a 3D image of the track. Uh, and at tracks like SPA, with their huge elevation changes, this can give uh, very important information about uh, how you're going through a turn and whether it's an uphill or a downhill turn. Now, one of the basic things that you might want to do is to play back your lap uh, and to see how you did at various points. So I'm going to start at the beginning. And if I click this play icon right here, it'll start playing back my lap. Uh, and you can see it, uh, the dot here representing my car where I am and the various traces and uh, data channels uh, moving forward as I go through the lap. And this is played back right now in real time, with the speed here being one to one. If I click the play button again, the speed slows down to one half real time. Click it again to one quarter, again to one eighth, and finally to one sixteenth. Uh, and then if I click it one more time, it resumes uh, the one to one normal speed. And then if I click this stop button, uh, the lap will stop playing back. So let's talk about how you can zoom in. So right now when I'm viewing my traces, I'm looking at the entire lap. If I want to zoom in to a particular section of the lap, I would left click uh, where I want to begin and then drag to the right and then release. And then I'm zooming into just that section. Uh, and as you notice here, the track map shows the section of the track I'm looking at. And there's a small thumbnail icon down here at the bottom right with this section highlighted, so you have an easy reference of where you are on the track. And if I want to zoom in even more, I can do the same thing again. I left click and drag to the interested section, and let go, and now I've zoomed into that. Now to zoom back out again, all I do is double click on the trace, and I'm zoomed out to uh, the full lap. Now another way I can zoom in is just by double clicking anywhere on a trace. If I do that, it zooms into a 10 second section of the track. Uh, and this is another quick and easy way to zoom in. Again, double click, and I zoom all the way back out again. Now that double click will work on uh, any of the traces. The steering percentage trace, though, if you double click on that one, it will zoom into the particular corner. So if I double click right here, it zooms in to this corner on the track, and I can look at that. Now again, double click to zoom all the way out. Uh, if I click over here on this corner, I'm zoomed into here on this corner, and then uh, double click to zoom out again. Now if I zoom in to a particular section of the track, I can play back that section by clicking the play icon. And it will play back until the end of the section of the track and then stop. Now you can also slow this down uh, by, clicking the play icon, by clicking the play icon again. And that gives you a uh, much more precise playback, which can be very useful in these zoomed in sections. Uh, one other way to uh, playback laps is by using the laps and then the play or the stop play playing lap option, which is control P or control shift P. And you can also adjust the playback speed here as well, if you like. So within each title bar of the trace or a data channel, you get the name of that trace. Uh, so right here we have the throttle, uh, brake, steering percentage, etc. throughout the rest of them. And this lets you know what is being displayed in that trace. Uh, in previous versions, uh, the 
tridel bar was actually displayed on the left side. Uh, it's been moved to the top for this version moving forward because this gives us more space uh, with longer names such as lateral acceleration uh, that wasn't fitting in the left. Uh, however, if you still like it beyond the left, you can change back to that option. Uh, just go to the file menu and choose settings and then here uncheck title on top. Now we have the titles on the left as they used to be. All right, so now the next thing is, well, how do I change what's in this trace? So to do so, uh, you choose the trace you want to change and just right click on it. Uh, you'll see the red highlight around it. You get this uh, pop-up menu and it has various options of what you can display in there. So if I wanted to change this uh, from throttle to something else, say uh, tires and brakes, I can choose here and choose my inner tire temps and it will then map whatever uh, that is, in this case, the inner tire temps. I can again choose something else, uh, perhaps you know, the water temperature, and I can get that displayed there too. And this will work on any of the traces and any of the data channels. So I can right click on a data channel and I can choose something else to display there. Now the next thing to look at in the display of a trace is the horizontal units. So in this case, I have these displayed as timing. Uh, so I, every one of these lines uh, is a 10 second increment uh, throughout my lap. Now, in addition to displaying by time, if you go to the file settings menu, under here, the graph by, you can also choose a lap percent or lap distance. So we're gonna choose lap distance right now. Click okay. And now down here, instead of the lap times, I have the distance of uh, the lap. If I zoom in. Uh, you can see that the distance also zooms in to match that. So uh, when you're looking at a lap, uh, if it's just you, uh, it doesn't really matter if you want to do it by time or by percentage or distance. But if you have two laps loaded and you're doing it by time, then you get to see where you're uh, gaining or losing on somebody. But if you want to see exactly what you're doing at the same time on the track as somebody else, like how do your inputs relate or how uh, does the car behave, you'd want to map that uh, using the lap distance or lap percentage. Okay, so now uh, let's discuss how you can position uh, one of these elements within the overall Z1 analyzer window. So it's very simple. All you do is click on the header uh, and drag it where you want it to go. And then this trace is moved here. Uh, I can pick up another one and move that. And I can move a data channel too if I want. I can move the track map and uh, the lap data window. Uh, in addition, I can change the size of any of these windows by clicking on the right hand corner here and dragging to the size I'd like it to be. And again, any of these windows can be resized. Now when I'm moving the windows around, by default, they are following uh, an invisible uh, grid and they snap to this grid. If I go to the file and the settings menu, uh, this option here, snap to grid, if I turn that off, now when I move them around, uh, it doesn't actually follow the grid. It just, it will stop exactly where I leave it. So depending on what you want to do, you may want that grid on or you may want that grid off. Uh, in addition, you can change the size of the grid uh, here on this grid size, uh, you can make it bigger, say 10. Uh, and if you want, you can have the grid being displayed by clicking Show Grid. So if I click that and click OK. Now, so now here you see the grid. Uh, and right now I have Snap to Grid turned off, so I can put this anywhere I like. But if I go back to the Settings dialog, turn Snap to Grid on, now when I move it, it will follow the grid around. And when I resize, it will also follow that grid around as well. So now after moving things around, uh, if you want to quickly restore uh, positions to their default locations, if you come here to the display menu and choose reset display, it will put everything back uh, to their default locations. So that's a quick and easy way to clean up the screen. Uh, and finally, uh, another way to uh, change how a trace is displayed is if you right click on it, go to trace display, you can choose maximize trace. And then that will take that one trace and cover the entire screen with it. And then if I right click back to trace display and choose restore trace, it takes it back to how it was before I maximized that trace. All right, so another thing we wanna talk about is how you can uh, 
remove some of these traces or some of these data channels from the display if you don't want them to be used. There's a couple of ways to do this. You can right click on the trace and choose trace display and then hide the trace. So now the trace is no longer visible. Uh, or you can go here to this display menu and you can choose show uh, trace uh, one through nine. And it tells you what's displayed in the trace as well. So trace one will show my water temperature, trace two is break, etc., all the way down. And there are keyboard shortcuts for these as well. So since this one is not checked, it's obviously invisible. But if I check it, now that trace gets restored. Uh, for the data points, these ones, I can again choose the trace display and hide the trace. Now the difference between the data channel and the traces is that when you hide the data channel, you're actually removing it. Um, so you have to add it back in again. And you can add up to 20 data channels. So I would go here, add data channel, uh, or I can do control D. And then I get a new one right here, which by default it displays the throttle, but I could change it to something else. Maybe I want it to display my steering percentage. Uh, I can put that up here. And now I get the steering percentage as I'm going through that lap. Uh, you can also hide uh, the lap data and the track map. Again, you do this by going to the display and choose the here show lap data or show track map or use this keyboard uh, shortcut. So if I click these, then the track map and the lab data screen disappear. So if you don't need to see those, uh, that's how you get rid of them. And then again, bring them back by clicking those two options. So hopefully this has been a helpful video. If there are any questions on how any of this works, please put them in the comments below. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll have more videos like this about the analyzer and the dashboard software.